How does a person start to learn PLC programming? First question you gotta ask yourself, what is it that you're going to use it for? It's not like using an Arduino to flash some lights. In something like that, that's a real simple process that's easy to understand and actually you kind of make up the process as you do your program. In the case of PLC programming, the kind that you get paid to do, in other words, you're either an engineer or technician or electrician and you're getting paid to understand PLCs. If you don't understand the process that you're programming, you can't program. So I, I don't mean that facetiously. What I'm saying is that I can take an electrician, someone who's a good electrician and knows mechanical things, you know, cylinders and motors, uh, bearings, couplers, that knows electro and mechanical and turn them into an ACE PLC programmer faster than I can take someone with a four-year degree in computer programming that doesn't have the experience on the shop floor, doesn't understand the processes. It's going to take a lot longer because they're going to have to pick up all of that experience on the shop floor, all the practical experience, the physical experience. So there's the physical side of it, and that's the process that you want to program or the machine that you want to program. And nobody's going to take and bring to you the sequence of the machine and spoon feed you. You're going to have to go to uh, meetings with other engineers and people, get the lineup on it, or you're going to have to just walk out on the shop floor because it stopped running and you need to ask all the right questions. If you don't understand the physical part of it, forget about the programming. Let's just say that you've got the physical part of it and now you want to pick up the programming part. And, you know, I said in, the, in a previous discussion that the employer is more interested in what you have for experience, not what you've learned. So if you say, well, I've got experience programming XYZ PLCs, and they're going to ask you, well, on what processes and what factories? And you say, well, just at home on a little uh, breadboard or training thing. If you say XYZ controllers and that's not what they have, they're not interested. If you say a brand of PLCs that they use, even though you don't have any practical experience, at least you already know the tools for programming and you understand ladder logic. Don't let anybody pull your leg. Ladder logic, ladder logic diagrams is still the number one programming format venue language in industrial automation. I have a standing challenge out there to anyone if I can't beat them two to one using ladder logic against structured text or any text language, I'll take them to Ruth Chris Steakhouse for a dinner on me with a friend of their choice. It's just not going to happen. Ladder logic diagrams are based on visual, and when you look at the program, you instantly see what's not true or what's false, what's on or what's off. With text-based languages, you, don't, you can't do that. So you don't have the time out on the shop floor to fool around reading a bunch of text and then trying to sort it out to see how to troubleshoot. <clears throat> you need the information right now. Ladder logic gives that to you. I do use structured text for math, and I do use function block diagrams for process control. But let's talk about learning ladder logic diagram. To do that, first you have to understand what the ladder logic diagrams are based on. If you don't understand the symbology, it's not going to make a lot of sense to you. You're always going to have a little kind of hang ups on what the symbols mean. So the first thing you have to do is first establish that you have the electrical background that you can understand ladder logic diagrams. Then you need to understand relays because that's what it's based on. Even though if you never use a relay in your career, you still have to understand relays at least long enough to make the transition into ladder logic diagrams. So let's take a look at where you should start. First, you need to find your way onto YouTube to the PLC Professor YouTube channel. 
and over in the left column where it says show more and and what you have over here when you're in YouTube I don't know I don't know exactly how yours looks but if you click on show more you're gonna see some playlist the first one is basic electricity so click on that you've got two lectures there they're about an hour each part one and part two start watching those if you already know all this fast forward or speed it up but if you don't have an affinity for electricity and magnetism you're probably not going to be much of a PLC programmer because it's about physical processes and physics and controlling it with a program in a in a with a processor and an IO interface if you don't have a good feel for electricity and magnetism you need to get that first secondly number see this is labeled zero number one which would be the second one is what is a PLC basics part one of part two that's about two and a half hours start with part one and if it piques your interest now if you find yourself bored with the introduction of relays into ladder logic diagrams you're probably not going to manage well because there will be certain thresholds you have to cross to fully understand ladder logic diagrams that will always escape you unless you paid the price in the beginning to learn the relationship between relays their contacts true if off true if on versus normally closed normally open and understand the true relationship of what a relay contact means in the logic that you're doing not just what a relay is I mean a relay is a electromagnetic uh, switch that you turn on and off every that's simple but is the logical relationship is what you have to understand if you get through these lectures and your interest is still peaked you know if you're still interested then the next step is to find some training material that works for you and before you buy the training material I would go to number two over here in the list what is a PLC and you're gonna go through some short lectures here what does it do digital input field devices output field devices the hardware itself what is ladder logic and then kind of a review of what is a PLC and then talk about building a learning station you don't want to do this with a simulator if you insist on using a simulator or an emulator that's fine that's your business but nothing cements solidifies the knowledge in your head than an interface between your brain and the real world and that is writing a program downloading it into a processor putting it in the run mode and then physically operating switches to see what the program does with you flipping the switches to see what outputs it turns on and off you cannot replace real hardware with a simulator if you're good with the simulation that's fine like I said that's your business watch these basic videos then number three here is a series on building a digital field device simulator and a micrologics 1400 station there are nine videos in the number three micrologics 1400 learning station the first seven are actually on building the digital field device simulator that's the box you see there with six push buttons with LEDs and six toggle switches so I take you through all the details of building that then the last two videos down there at the bottom part one part two wiring a micrologics 1400 to actually connect your digital field device simulator up to a micrologics 1400 if you're using a different controller that's fine the details are still the same okay we directed you to pick up some head knowledge and in a previous video we discussed what PLC would be the best one to use to learn with now the micro 800 which we do have training materials on it does have a decent simulator however the micro 800 although it will eventually probably replace the micrologix it has not yet in the software connected components workbench it's not quite up to snuff yet compared to RS logics with the MicroLogix controllers you've got enough to get yourself started just go watch the free videos on the YouTube channel then you can watch the one on what PLC to use and then you can watch the next one we're gonna do which is the training materials lab projects how do you actually take the hardware and your digital field device simulator 
That's your lights and switch box. Hook it up. You know, we showed you how to hook it up to your controller. Well, how do you use that to learn how to program and troubleshoot? That'll be in the next video. Thank you for watching.